We are here with NBA 2K25 Arcade Edition. Big shout out to NBA 2K for providing me early access to share what to expect in your My Career journey. We're going to break down the player builder, the customization features, badges, along with the player animations, jump shots, and accessories. So let's get into it. Now, of course, the builder starts with the customization, and this includes a ton of hairstyles and choices to fine tune your player's appearance. I encourage you to take your time and go through all the presets and then customize your player to your liking. If you played NBA 2K24 Arcade Edition, then you will be excited to see the builder is back with some new core badges in the game. Now, if you're new to the series, you're in for a great experience since this is the latest builder, which is the most advanced version in the NBA Arcade Edition and My Career Mobile series. What I love about the builder is the ability to see what badges and what rarity for the badges you can unlock based on your player's attributes and what height, weight, and wingspan can impact a player's max potential. Now for my build, I wanted to emulate my favorite player from the past, Tracy McGrady, but I also wanted to give him a three ball and a mid range so he could dominate the inside and outside in the newly added neighborhood. And more on that will be shown later in the video. The neighborhood will be where the heart of the street ball action will be and your chance for epic PVP, PVE games as well. Let's recreate my player so you can see how the builder works. The process took me a while offline since you can't rush the greatness of making your future NBA superstar. But don't worry, I had enough practice so I can explain this to everyone. So when adjusting your height, weight, and wingspan, it will change the max potential stats for your player. And you can see the adjustments update as you sort through the settings. So it gives you a great idea of how you want to build out your player as far as their max potential. But when you get to the next screen, that's where it gets more interesting because then you'll start allocating your points and then you can really see what badge attributes you need to have in order to unlock the next badge rating. So let's get into that. So you can see since I didn't allocate any points yet, none of the badges are activated. The way it works is in order to get a specific badge, and I'm telling you, I look through all of them because there's some really good ones for each attribute type, like for finishing. And some of the ones I really like is Posturizer. I like Slithery. If you like to jump from far, Limitless Takeoff is pretty crazy. If you're a post scorer, then you want to look at Dream Shake. So like, it all depends on your play style. But for each badge, you'll see there's a minimum attribute that you need to have. So you see for post Horizon, you need to have a 99 driving dunk in order to get the Hall of Fame badge. Now, this is where it gets interesting because if you go back to the previous screen, you'll notice that my max potential rating for driving dunk can only go up to like 96, 97. So that's where you have to fine tune your player's height, wingspan, in order to get the potential of getting that rating. And then once you're on this screen here, you can add the attribute points to give yourself an opportunity to get that badge later on in the game when you have enough badge points to, to unlock it. I recommend getting a notebook and writing down what stats you need to hit in order to get a chance to get those badges. You don't always have to get the Hall of Fame badge. You can get a silver or gold badge as well. The key is just to be able to unlock it, right? It'll help you out big time. Like some of the badges that I wanted to go after for this build is the Posturizer, Pro Touch, Limitless, Takeoff, Slithery. For the shooting, I like Catch and Shoot, Corner Specialist, Green Machine, Limitless Range. So like those stats require a high mid-range and a high three-point shot. Uh, for the playmaking, I wanted to have Ankle Breaker. So you needed a high ball handle. For Dimer, you needed a higher ball accuracy. Unpluckable, you needed a higher ball handle. And of course, if you look at the badge, if you click on those categories, you can see a breakdown of what those badges do. And even defense, because defense is important too. Don't be fooled into just doing a pure offense build. You're going to need some defense if you're going to be playing in the neighborhood. So like having things like pogo stick is crazy, right? It allows you to get more blocks, gives you a chance to get more rebounds, off-ball pests. I mean, there's a lot of good badges in this game, and that's why I really like this builder. It's, it's pretty close to the console version, so it gives you a lot of control of how you can build out your player. Before we stop talking about the builder, I want to point out, you can see as you increase the attributes, your max overall goes up as well. So that's something to pay attention to because there is a limit on the amount of attribute points you can distribute. So keep that in mind. But one little fun fact is if you raise stamina up to 99, it doesn't really change the overall and it gives your player a longer opportunity to be on the court. That's gonna come in handy in 12 minute quarter games that you're gonna be playing in order to get the most points from the match. And here's another screen of the badges for like shooting, seats for limitless range. I need to have three point shot at a 99 in order to get the Hall of Fame. 
But even if I had bronze, I just need a 76 three-point shot in. Having bronze them in his range is still pretty helpful. And I'll be honest with you, even if you had 87, you'll be good. So in addition to the builder, you get to choose your player's takeover as well. So if you wanted to also add limitless range, just makes him an even more powerful shooter when the takeover is activated. You can also add a secondary takeover. So you can go with extreme clamps if you want to be able to be a lockdown defender in clutch situations as well. So you get choice of four different takeovers. You know, something to consider as well when picking out your player build. But let's get into the other features. Once you're done with everything, you will load into your My Court. And there's also quests, right? So that's part of the neighborhood. You got to follow the quest tracking. It's very helpful. And you can also minimize that so it doesn't block what you see on the screen. I am playing on the iPad. I think it works really smooth when you're using controller. 2K did give me some VC to start building out my player. We did go ahead and raise some attributes. You can see driving layup. We did driving dunk. We also boosted our shooting stats as well. But this gives me an opportunity now to show you exactly how the badge system works inside the game. Since we did those upgrades, we can now start adding badges. So these are the badge upgrades. And there's also the core badges that you can add on. So you can see that each badge has a point requirement in order to add one on. You need to be able to hit 10 points between tier one and tier two in order to be able to add a tier three badge. That's why it's very important to have a well-rounded player. That way you can mix and match some of these badges. Or if not, you can go straight up and go for a gold badge right in the beginning for a stat. But just make sure you hit that 10 point requirement in order to unlock the tier three badges, which is the ones that most people want to add, right? Like Limitless Takeoff, Posterizer, Slithery, for example, for shooting, the tier three will be blinders, catch and shoot, dead eye, and limitless range. But for tier one badges, mini magician is pretty good as well. I like clutch shooter. I like space creator. I like volume shooter. So I wouldn't mind having like a bronze or a silver badge for those as well. Now for playmaking, the tier three badges are bailout, clamp breaker, needle threader, and unpluckable. Well, you can see tier two also got handle for days, hyperdrive, tier one has the ankle breaker. It's got the mismatch expert. It's got floor general, which is pretty good too. It gives a boost to all the offensive attributes on the players in the game. So like, it all depends on your play style. Like if you want to be a pure playmaking point guard, you got to have stuff like Dimer and floor general. It allows you to be like a Tyrese Halliburton or Chris Paul type player, you know, the facilitator. If you want to be a posturizer like a Ja Morant or a Vince Carter, then you know you got to have the correct badges for that now if you like to do like euro steps and all those fancy moves you might want to check out acrobat as well if you like to do dream shakes that's something you want to check out if your post game is strong if you want to be a lockdown defender or a crazy shot blocker and get rest in peace to the kembe motumbo but things like pole stick is helpful post lockdown is great off ball pass if you like to get a lot of steals menace is solid clamps glove interceptor like i feel like the defensive badges are very underrated man there's a lot of good ones that will allow you to be a difference maker in the neighborhood. Now for animations, you get a lot of choices. I mean, you really get a lot from the beginning as well. Some are unlocked based on your player's size or their attributes. So that's also something to consider as well. Like if you want a lot of the Stephen Curry animations, you gotta go with a shorter player. I think it was like 6'5 or lower. You get to choose your jump shots, your free throws, your dribble pull-ups your spin jumpers, your hop jumpers, your post fades, post hooks, and post hop shots. You also got a choice of your dribble style, your crossovers, your behind the backs, your spins, your hesitations, your signature size ups, your triple threat styles. And for each of these animations, there are a lot of choices. But you can see we got Kobe Bryant selected. There's requirements for that. So you got to pay attention to that. Some going to require a certain speed with bull attribute. And again, like I said earlier, a certain height. You get a choice of your layups, your dunks, your alley-oops, your contact dunk animations. And then you can also select your NBA intro, your NBA jump ball rituals, and your street ball intro. As far as equipment, let's get into that. And then you can see exactly what gear you can rock. So you got the mic court top you can choose. You know, right now it starts off with a bunch of tanks. You unlock stuff as you progress in the game. And there is some stuff coming soon, right? There is going to be seasons inside the game as well. There's going to be themes around NBA players offering fresh rewards and updates for players to enjoy. 
including a chance to unlock exclusive time limited rewards such as solid streetwear, new hairstyles, unique tattoos, and coveted shoes. So stay tuned in for that because that is coming soon as well. There's a lot of choices that you can choose as far as the additional customization of your player. And as you do the quest objectives inside the neighborhood, you do unlock more stuff too. With sneaker brands, we got Nike, there's Adidas, Jordan brand, Under Armour, and there's also Converse. So I know y'all been waiting. Let me also show you the neighborhood. So right when you get in the neighborhood, the first objective is to talk to Ronnie2k. He will walk you through a couple of things and he will also give you a few other quests that you can do. But inside the neighborhood, you have your street ball courts, you also got your NBA shop where you can look at your NBA merch and other gear that you can use to add on to your player. And there's also a connection game port manager, which allows you to play connection games with NBA players that you can unlock on your squad. I thought this was actually pretty cool. As soon as I went in, I had a chance to play with Wemby. So upon completing that quest, you see we already get VC, a shirt, new jeans, and a new tap. So the rest of the quest will require you going to the connection game court manager. We're going to check out the neighborhood street ball court. There's a 2v2 court and a 3v3 court. Again, this was a lot of fun. I did enjoy it. Now you could adjust the difficulty, but keep in mind, it does modify the amount of VC and mind points earned in the game. If you're starting off in the game, you haven't done any upgrades. I think it's totally fine to play on rookie or pro, but rookie's only gonna give you 30%. So if you could try to play on pro, at least you'll get 100%. So this is the first matchup I was able to do. Uh, we teamed up with a couple NPCs. You can see the ratings are about the same as mine. And then the NPCs we played against, their rating is a little bit higher. For this mode here, you can play PvE games and you can play PvP as well. And I feel like the game was pretty smooth. I was able to maneuver up the court. We got our rebound right there. This shit out to the open shooter and we're cutting. Gotta get the easy baskets, right? There you go. We're pushing again. We got the fast break going. Easy jam. And I definitely feel good playing this. It was entertaining. And to be able to play NBA 2K on the go, this is exciting. Especially being able to play my career. I think this is a W series. And with the addition of the neighborhood, just giving them more opportunities to play with people online in any type of setting, I thought it was pretty cool. We finished that objective. Now we're going to head over to the connection game court so you can see how that works. But you only get five tries a day in order to get a connection player on your roster. Right away, we were matched up with Tyrese Halliburton and Victor Wembyama. And if you win this game, you're able to get a player on your team. But we'll save that for another video because we do got more videos lined up for the other modes inside of NBA 2K25 Arcade Edition. Uh, we also got the greatest mode, which is being added again. But this time around, it is being revamped. There's going to be some new stuff in there. It's called the GOAT Challenge. Where you get to relive career defining moments of game legends with a new goat release with every patch of the game there's also the jason tatum challenge where you get to experience the growth of jason tatum from nba rookie to the nba champion you progress through 10 levels from his first nba game in 2017 to 2024 nba finals to unlock upgrades to strengthen takeover abilities badges and complete goals to unlock limited time rewards so this NBA 2K25 Arcade Edition is jam-packed, and I don't think it was fair to cover everything all in one video. So definitely subscribe for more NBA 2K24 Arcade Edition content. And if y'all want to see a My Career series, let me know in the comment section. We could try to do that as well. So as always, I appreciate the support. I will catch everyone in the next one. Stay ballin'.